Why are you here in uh, Norway? Um, some years ago, I uh, heard from Ragnar and Cecilia at a conference in Berlin about Norway and uh, NDLA. And so, uh, since then, it was always a vague idea of open educational resources paradise in Norway. But uh, nobody actually knew how you're doing it and what are you doing exactly. And so when I got invited to the University of Lillehammer, I thought, well, that's an opportunity to come to Norway and uh, to speak to the people of NDLA. And then I spoke to Orvin and he said, well, yeah, we're scattered across the country. You can totally do that, but you have to go up to Tromsø. And yeah, so I decided uh, to do a research road trip. And uh, what have you found on this uh, road trip? <laughs> well, a lot of beautiful countryside and a lot of beautiful insights. Uh, what have worked for you and uh, what are possible obstacles uh, on the way. And uh, yeah, it was quite interesting to have those different views on the same topic and have the view from uh, Leonard from the pedagogical side and have the view from the innovation side from Knut Inge and have the way from uh, the view from Ragnar uh, and all those different views and from the people from Serpis uh, developing for NDLA and from the guy from H5P and yeah that's uh, quite interesting to to have those different views and yeah, it's, it's a huge amount of data <laughs> and uh, the important thing is now to find out what actually is important or may be important for other countries who start uh, on the way uh, of producing OER which is communally funded. So. What do you find interesting about NDLA? So, um, for me, uh, personally, it's uh, about how we deal with diversity and uh, the interesting part was that a lot of people actually said, yeah, it's, uh, it's about the diversity of material. So also the guy from the Publishers Union, he said, yeah, uh, the risk of NDLA is uh, that the diversity of materials will decrease. And on the other hand, John Oliver uh, from the board of directors, he said, yeah, it's not our goal to uh, kill the publishers and decrease the diversity, but it's uh, about producing materials. Uh, so uh, the students have a good quality of materials and have a huge diversity. But on the other hand, the, the problem is if you have a limited amount of resources that you have to spend on the technical platform and the resources, uh, creating new resources and revisiting the old resources. It's, it's a lot to do with uh, actually a lot of money, <laughs> but if you have to, uh, to distribute the money, it's, uh, it's not so much anymore. And it's a, it's a huge task to maintain all the old materials. And uh, on the other side, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good thing to have the variety of, of resources. For example, uh, the, the, one of the school book editors said, yeah, in a history book or in a social science book, you, you can show one way of doing it. So you, you can't go into local phenomena like the history of Bergen and uh, but if you have online resources you could take a local dive into history and you can offer different ways of, of doing history so that's that's one of the many chances of, of OER. Uh. Is, is there a special way in uh, how uh, learning materials in NDLA are made compared to other uh, distributors? Well, I think uh, the, the, the most interesting part was to see how you actually make it uh, with teams of teachers, for example, who are responsible uh, for a certain subject and uh, work as a team and uh, help each other out. And uh, the interesting part was also how you could support those teachers because 
it's uh, not training teachers to become media experts, but say focus on the content and we will help you with the rest and uh, don't think 200 times about it if the comma is on the right position, but somebody else will look for the, uh, for the uh, end uh, layout and, and um, final production stage. So, yeah. and, and how do you uh, place MDLA in, in, uh, in, in terms of uh, meeting the uh, future requirements? Is it, is it a good way to go or, or is it uh, one step in many steps? You never know. <laughs> You don't know what the future needs are, but I think uh, keeping, uh, for example, the, the smartphone and the tablets uh, and PC uh, in mind if you, if you uh, design materials is very important. Because uh, nowadays, uh, school in Germany, it's always like, yeah, don't use your smartphone. But it's the thing every student has in his pocket. So, uh, don't uh, say you can't use it as a calculator if everybody has a calculator in his pocket. So um, I think uh, it has a, it, uh, a chance to be a, a resource also that will be used after school. So it, especially in this vocational fields, uh, if you know, well, I had a resource on how to change this and this in that machine, for example, or how to uh, fill out some documents on uh, some health issues. And uh, you know somewhere in your back, yeah, there was something on NDLA. And you can look back into that and there's no license that has expired uh, some years ago. But you, you have all this material at your hand and you can search it and you can actually find it. That's quite good. And uh, I think that's important for, um, yeah, uh, for the future and to, to be there for the students and even if they are not students anymore. So. You've been to Norway now for 14 days. What has really surprised you? How professional this organization became over the time. Well, 10 years is a long time, but uh, still this uh, having a virtual organization that is managing all those uh, different aspects of the, the work was quite impressive. So, um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a huge task and you, you're doing very well on it and uh, you have a lot of obstacles <laughs> and uh, not only people who pat you on the back and say yeah that's the way to go but you're still going it and i think that's that's very motivating for other countries as well to uh, to build on those ideas and uh, to actually say yeah we can we can take their platform and transform it into our platform and uh, not only sharing the content, but also sharing uh, the software like uh, H5P, for example, to, uh, to create something new that is uh, relevant and give it away for free. And uh, other countries uh, or other universities like the one from Australia are coming in and saying, yeah, we would uh, love to have a, a learning resource that could look like this. And now the H5P guys are making it for the Australian university and everybody else in the world can use it. So that is uh, really something, something cool. Yeah.